I think the most exciting part of the conference now to begin a special session on rooftop and distributed solar. May I invite uh, the panelists, Mr. Anurag Agrawal from Amplus, Mr. Balwan Joshi, Managing Director, Edom Infra, as our session chair and moderator, Mr. Grish Kalam, <coughs> VP Sector Head, Corporate Rating, Ikra Limited, Mr. Karthike Narayan Sharma, Head Growth and Strategy, Sunshore Energy, Mr. Jay Kumar Vagila, Key Account Manager for Fourth Partner Energy, Mr. Rahul Dasari, Director and Chief Executive from Sunshot Technologies, Mr. Amish Ghosar, Head, Head Projects, PV PowerTech, Mr. Bhavan Jain, LNT Financial Services, and Mr. Rohit Pandita from Mundra Solar TV. May I request the speakers of this session to take their seats on the stage? Uh, thank you very much, Anand. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very interesting session indeed. In fact, uh, Anand has been consistent in his comment at the end of the last session and uh, at the beginning of this session. He ended last session saying that probably there is a sun is setting on the large scale solar projects and uh, sun is rising for the rooftop projects. I started wondering really what is the, going to be the situation. Uh, certainly what we have seen in the last uh, couple of years that more than close to 4,000 megawatt of solar rooftop capacity has been installed. Also, but large part of that capacity has been in the CI category, commercial industrial category, where the residential has been very small, close to 300, 350 uh, megawatt kind of uh, capacity. Also, another trend that we have seen in the last uh, few years has been the rise in the OPEX projects or the RESCO projects. The share of the RESCO has been consistently increasing over the last four years. Uh, and probably it has touched close to 40% of the total capacity installed last year. Uh, what we expect in the coming years, the share of RESCOs to go up and with that uh, some other challenges would uh, come up. The residential sector projects would start increasing. But at the same time, uh, we have started seeing a lot of headwinds. And these headwinds are not only for the large scale solar projects, but also for the rooftop projects. Two states have recently said that no more net metering. We have also seen a couple of other challenges, like if you are accept, uh, accepting the projects or developing a project under net metering arrangement, you will not be allowed to take open access. So that's uh, another development which has come up in the last couple of months. Apart from that, there has been a very recent development. I don't know how many of you have seen it. Uh, forum of regulators has come up with the model draft regulations for the net metering and which are expected to be adopted by several regulators if not all in coming months and these regulations have proposed two models net metering as well as net billing which is not exactly like a gross metering but it's a little different than the gross metering and for net billing which is going to pose another challenge for the uh, project developers and also there has been a lot of debate in terms of whether, what is the definition of the rooftop. Broadly speaking, whenever we talk about the rooftops, we talk about behind the meter installations. When we say it's a behind the meter, we call it a rooftop. Whether it's a ground mounted or actually on the roof. Okay. But uh, the regulators and the utilities want to distinguish between the rooftop, behind the meter rooftop and the ground mounted system behind the meter and want to distinguish between the two. My personal view is that, strictly speaking, looking at the electricity and definitions, you can't distinguish. But uh, regulators, in their own wisdom, they have, the form of regulators has decided to distinguish between the two. Um, so these have been the challenges of the policy regulatory fronts. I'm not going to take away my panelist's time. Uh, but another challenge is the financing. While there are two large lines of credit, one by World Bank through SBI, another by IDP through PNB. Both these lines of credits have got their own ways of dealing with things. While SBI lines of credit looks at risk projects and has a specified framework for do, to do the credit risk assessment as well as the counterparty for PPS. IDP line of credit doesn't even actually at this point of time looks at risk as a serious model. So they are only looking at the capex as a model. Also, both the lines are extremely negative in terms of funding uh, residential projects, even for the large residential projects. So there are several challenges which are several headwinds as I would call it for the sector. 
uh, but we would hear more from my uh, elite panelists over here. What I would suggest that each panelist take four to five minutes so that we take around 30 35 minutes of time for uh, our comments, then followed by 10 to 12 minutes of uh, QA session. Okay, so may I start with uh, Amish from the my left corner? Uh, thank you, Balwanji, and my elite, elite panelists here together for giving me the opportunity to start, which gives me an open field kind of scenario. Uh, I, uh, when I came here, I had a couple of uh, points in mind which I thought I should share interestingly because uh, now rooftop being at the stage where it is, we have seen a host of problems which everybody knows or everybody is aware of. But a couple of uh, instances which come to my mind, which happened very recently with me is for a couple of residential societies. Now, residential is obviously a very small portion of rooftop, but a couple of residential societies with a fair size of uh, projects required 120 or kilowatt. I uh, had a couple of HNIs who said that they were willing to finance it for the society for putting up these plants. Now, again, that is also nothing very new or nothing great. Obviously, for anybody to put money in this uh, sector, they would have to have a structure when, wherein they would they are investing in this and uh, secure their money. But what it shows is that uh, private HNIs or private uh, small small businesses also are now having confidence in in our renewable energy and the returns which they can generate. This is a very positive uh, which I am seeing now, and therefore. In the next coming few months, what is earlier discussed in the earlier uh, panels that the time for rooftop is coming, is there, is a very good opportunity where most of us can uh, milk the cow as uh, one can say. Uh, having said that, we also come up with a big responsibility wherein we are setting up an example we are all, we as EPC guys, we as people who are offering renewable energy uh, renewable energy options to consumers that the kind of plants that we set up, the kind of installations that we do have to have some kind of check and balance method, some kind of monitoring because only that if we are able to give effective returns to these kind of investors, the kind of power assurances to consumers only then the next level of funding will come in this uh, mini funding, micro funding as we call it uh, in that sense. Uh, one more thing I would want to point out is the future of uh, rooftop solar. One of the largest opportunities as we see it is these uh, EVs which are going to be launched worldwide and therefore in the country in the next 5, 6, 8 years or something like that. All these will require a host of charging points. Uh, I think uh, earlier in the day, uh, Mr. Khanna also touched base on this and a couple of other speakers also spoke about this. But we'll have these large format departmental stores having these parking lots which will also work as charging points. Wherein few of us, many of us will go there, park our cars and by the time we finish our shopping, we finish our grocery, our cars will be charged. So, the car ports of the future will all be based on solar and that might be a very large opportunity in the coming uh, period for most of us. So how we kind of make this a very large opportunity is also again in the hands of us EPC guys, us rooftop service providers and uh, take this to the future of them. I think uh, I would then hand over to the next person who bring up his points. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, before, before uh, you know, starting Girish from Ikra. So you know, I would request you to uh, specifically look at the credit risk related issues and financing related issues of the ESCOs as well as for the capital projects of the companies which are not returning. Yes, certainly. Uh, so thanks, uh, Mr. Bhavan. Uh, let me highlight uh, saying that uh, definitely you know, the potential for the rooftop solar per se is quite promising. Uh, thanks to the policy support, uh, thanks to the quite significantly improved direct competitiveness of you know, the solar uh, as an energy source. Uh, 
But having said that, uh, you know, uh, the, the overall pace of capacity addition in the rooftop segment has been quite slow uh, uh, so far uh, because of, and one of the major challenges uh, in this segment has been, you know, the resistance and the willingness of uh, the discos to allow the rooftop solar uh, uh, penetration in the grid, uh, as uh, uh, most of you are aware of. In fact, uh, recently the WCCA has also, you know, approved the the, the uh, phase two of uh, a rooftop solar program, uh, which was earlier called Sushti uh, scheme, uh, and by my, under which you know significant uh, you know assistance has been provided, almost eleven thousand four hundred crore, and it also talks about you know incentivizing the discoms as implementing agency based on the uh, you know the milestone achievement. Having said that, uh, you know whether uh, that could be successful or not, that something is remains to be seen given the fact that discoms are still not willing. You know, uh, to allow uh, rooftop penetration uh, because of the fact that uh, you know uh, there is a apprehension of loss of greeny uh, customers, which are subsidizing commercial and industrial customers uh, in a way, resulting into loss of uh, significant revenue for uh, these discounts. And this apparently has resulted uh, into a significant regulatory cut, as Mr. Bilok Balwan pointed out. For example, in case of Maharashtra, MERC has recently issued a consultative paper for you know, uh, removal of net metering and int introduction of the gross metering and plus UP uh, real estate uh, SERC has also uh, removed the net metering per se in the recent <coughs> months. So these are the regulatory hiccups which uh, the sector is facing and on top of that the net metering regulations also are quite inconsistent and they vary quite widely across the states. Now moving on to the credit risk profile of the projects, see we have a, 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 a limited coverage when it comes to entities uh, in this space we have quite significant coverage in the utility solar space. But whatever coverage that we have, you know, the, the ratings are getting constrained because of, you know, the lack of scale in this particular space. And uh, more importantly, you know, the relatively high financing cost, you know, from the uh, lending community. Uh, and that is essentially because of the transaction size being on low and there are high transaction costs associated from the lender's perspective when it comes to, you know, financing on the rooftop side, okay. So, but otherwise, some of the uh, the larger and the growing uh, players in the rooftop space, uh, essentially, which are backed by the uh, the solid PE firms, they are growing quite fast. Essentially, in the open access solar space and also the rooftop uh, CNI uh, based on the RESCO model. So that is backed by you know the PE funding from the some of the renowned PE players, uh, which is happening for some of the few large uh, players in this particular field. Having said that, for the, the, the smaller and emerging players in the rooftop segment, uh, which are into EPC or CAPEX or OPEX mode, they are still uh, you know, finding out kind of a funding challenges uh, uh, and uh, that is quite apparent. In fact, the funding challenges are quite apparent even for the larger players in the utility scale, which we discussed in the first uh, uh, part of this uh, presentation. So uh, overall, uh, uh, so that's the point which I wanted to make. And another important issue is, you know, from the credit perspective, uh, we also look at the, the key metrics like uh, debt coverage uh, indicators and the project error. So uh, these are a function of, you know, various parameters like project cost, the PLF, uh, ability to operate the plants in a desired range and so on, and the leveraging levels, and also the interest rate. So the DSAR levels for most of these projects, you know, appear to be quite modest in the range of 1.15 to 1.2. And uh, more importantly, another aspect for the rooftop projects is, you know, the sensitivity of the climatic conditions of the PLF levels. Unlike the utility solar space, they are highly sensitive because of the fact that these projects are located in a city area and they are more prone to climatic uh, variations. So that has an impact on the PLF levels. Uh, and coupled with the higher financing cost, you know, uh, and the, the PLF expectation of 16 to 17 percent for a typical rooftop category project, you know, the DSAR levels appear to be quite modest. And uh, given the low scale of many of these projects, the ratings get constrained. So that's the point uh, which I would like to make at this stage. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Joshi. Uh, thank you, EQ team, Anand, for uh, having all of us here. Uh, before going into the topic, uh, uh, I'll just tell you about uh, my, uh, our backgrounds so that it will give you a perspective. Uh, so I'm one of the co-founder of Sunshot Technologies. Uh, we do uh, large-scale rooftop uh, commercial industrial uh, project support under OPEX, cosi Net, CAPEX model. Um, I think uh, when I look at the rooftop sector per se, uh, you can put it under three brackets. You have the small residential, which are like say less than 100 kilowatt. Then you have a lot of projects which are falling in the ba uh, basket of say 100 
uh, to a megawatt and then a megawatt plus. And if I just put, you know, uh, four criteria, technical, commercial, financial, and regulatory, because this gives us a prism through which to see that, you know, how this, uh, each of the sector, uh, each of the segment is getting impacted, because it is important to understand that. Commercially, I think we all are convinced that rooftop solar makes sense. An asset that you put on your roof will pay you back with without depreciation benefit within four or five years and has a life, a claimed life of 25 years. Even if it is, if it runs, say, for 10 to 15 years, because nobody has been around to see 25 years, even if it, it runs for 10 to 15 years, it kind of makes uh, commercial sense. I'm not even getting into the green benefit that is, you know, uh, uh, that, that is required for the whole world is uh, getting behind. But the challenge that typically comes is, I think, first, I will start from the technical aspect, uh, coming from a construction EPC background. What's, what's happening is that, as we've seen in the previous panel, there's a huge downward pressure on prices. And beyond the, uh, beyond the point, the only innovation that has happened in the sector, I think, is price reduction. And price reduction has been uh, from the perspective of compromising on material quality, reducing material quality, and a couple of players in the value chain going out of business. So the, po uh, the point I want to make is, price reduction comes at a specific cost. Uh, and the biggest uh, risk that we typically see is that, uh, or for the sector is, uh, you see a cyclone Fadi coming in, or you have a cyclone Warda, or you have high wind speeds. And apart from modules and inverter that everybody covers, I think the next most important element is actually the structures. And not much civil structural engineering is going into structures. I mean, I have my colleague Shavesh here, he will throw more light on it. But not much uh, due diligence is going uh, on structures because of it every time. You know, some of the solar plants within the cities, they fly off. It's kind of a tough thing for the entire sector. And the fact is, we all know that a module weighs almost 20 kilos plus. So if it falls on somebody, it is catastrophic. So what's happening is that in this whole process of, you know, tariff making the headlines, somewhere longevity, quality is kind of taking a backseat. We have done a power plant at Mumbai airport. Trust me, if you were to focus on cost, you know, we would be in news for the wrong reasons by now, <laughs> right? So that's one thing which I'm saying that technically the sector is getting uh, uh, pretty badly battled. Uh, next, I want to touch upon on the regulatory aspect, which I'm pretty sure uh, Mr. Joshi will do a much, much better job. But what's happening is, why a DISCOM is not giving net metering permission or going against net metering permission? Why are the, they not giving net metering along with group captive uh, open access permission? We're seeing it from one side. The other side is, even an industrial state like Maharashtra, 30-40% of your electricity goes absolutely free of cost to farms, or what we call the lower strata. Now, that's a socio-economic political call. I don't want to comment on it, but the fact is, somebody has to pay for it. The next maybe 20-30% goes to you know residential customer, which is again subsidized. Then what happens is, the balanced industrial and commercial consumers in any state, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, they end up cross-subsidizing this low tariffs. And what is a rooftop solar plant or a group capital solar plant doing? You are actually going and hitting these top paying consumers of discounts and taking away their business. And trust me, all discounts here, I mean, if I say ask them, they are as good as junk bonds. They did D or below. So the fact is, you need to have capitalization of the discounts. You need to have some financing scheme for the discount to incentivize to promote distributed solar. Else, they don't have any incentive. So typically what is happening is, the right hand of the government is saying, I want to do solar, I want to do, be a part of International Solar Alliance. And the left hand is saying, but where do I have the money? I don't even have money to pay salaries for three months. Look at what happened to BSNL. So discounts are no different. So something has to be done. Uh, uh, you know, so I, I, I constantly keep saying, uh, solar rooftop does not need subsidies. If you really want to subsidize, give that money to discounts to allow us to do solar with a free hand. Seki doesn't matter. I mean, let that money go to your uh, discounts per se. And last, what I would like to touch upon is definition, uh, definitely the financial aspect which people mentioned. But I think uh, all IFC. SBI, PNB, all these funding that has come in, what is happening is it is going at the top echelons. It is going to entities which are triple B plus, double A kind of rated. These companies are anyway bankable. 
they don't need your low cost funding. The low cost funding is uh, required for triple B plus uh, triple B net, and those kind of entities were not in kind a of bankable. And here I slightly differ from the financial community. You, the, the concern is NPAs, the concern is defaults. You look at the kind of default the top end of the company does, both in terms of volume and value. When I say volume, number of teams and value in thousands of crores. And do a comparison of how many defaults an SME does, both in volume and value. Then you get a perspective that you know how financing for this particular sector has to be done. Because yes, it entails a bit of risk, it entails a little bit of business innovation, but the fact is, if we don't do it, if people don't stick their neck out and figure out how to manage and mitigate this risk, uh, this sector flourishing will be uh, you know, a tough thing to do. But then still, I'm quite positive because you know, I know many entrepreneurs like us are you know, pushing the envelope and everywhere where people see challenges, if you take a contrarian view, that's where you are able to you know, build a business and scale a business. Now I have to request uh, Jaitiman, who has got a very background also uh, from past, to explain what challenges the project faces, what challenges the project developer, both at BTC as well as the rest uh, developer faces while dealing with the uh, project. Right. right, thank you, uh, thank you for having me here on the uh, dais. Good afternoon to everyone here. Uh, I would like to spend a few uh, seconds here just to introduce our organization. I am from both Arthur Energy Group, so uh, we are one of the leading rooftop developers in the country and uh, very soon we are getting into the open access segment also so that we become the one-stop shop for the end customer to supply uh, renewable energy. Uh, we have done about 150 megawatt of installation till now and we are there in 23 states, about 1700 locations and about 100 corporate plants. Uh, and the growth philosophy or the, the organization philosophy is to grow with the customer. So you tie up with the customer and try and retain him for the entire life cycle to keep the pocket share there. Uh, that's how we have focused on making solar more as a service rather than selling it as transaction based, not a one time sale, but try and uh, drive them on the energy road back that how do you become more sustainable. And there I would like to start link uh, with our key trends what we are seeing in the rooftop segment. So yes, uh, rooftop obviously uh, currently it is at 4.5 gigawatt uh, level and we see that it should increase next year by at least 50% from here. So 2 to 2.5 gigawatt should get added in next year. And the reason why I see this is because there is an internal momentum built already. There is no external subsidy or external impetus required for this market to grow. There is already a a uh, good amount of gap between the grid power and the solar power. Uh, as Rahul and my the other co-panelists also have suggested, there are roadblocks, there are challenges to be addressed, like obviously regulatory uh, aspects, rate metering aspects, uh, competitive pressures to reduce uh, margins. Uh, even the customers have now become demanding, they want, earlier people used to be happy to sign a 20 year BPA, now they want a 10 year BPA. And plus that tariff has to be lower than the grid tariff. Uh, customers come back and say that what is your tariff which is offered to us goes lower than the grid tariff. Then uh, The grid tariff goes lower to the tariff offered by you. Uh, but they don't realize that we have done the investment from day one, right? So beyond which we don't have control on the grid price. Uh, so yes, uh, there has been uh, the competitive pressure is there. But uh, overall as an opportunity I feel, uh, for the rooftop segment here is, apart from the scale of the market which is yet to be captured by everyone, uh, there are other value added services which we, which I feel will come along, which will be energy storage, uh, EV charging stations or energy management of that organization. So uh, these could be the value added services which uh, if you are tied up with that customer, you would be the first preference to be uh, because you are like an advisor to that organization. So, this and uh, finally, I would like to specifically spend another couple of minutes on the utility versus you know rooftop. Yes, both of them are at the opposite ends. As Rahul said, uh, pressure on distribution company is to reduce their subsidy, cross subsidy burden. Uh, and we, as rooftop, we are taking away the uh, high paying or the subsidizing customers. So there is a you know, pressure on their bottom lines, there is a pressure on them to 
make minimum return on equity, which as per Electricity Act they should get. Uh, but I think yes, we need to address this issue at a different level rather than fighting at the local <coughs> level. This is more policy driven where uh, if we, as a rooftop community or as a rooftop developer community, we get more uh, visibility towards like next five years, what should be the cross subsidy, uh, you know, cross subsidy surcharge trend for a particular state. So we are able to you know bring that to the customer's viewpoint. So he also has a clarity that this could be savings. And as an organization, we are also able to invest as developers there. But definitely, this is uh, it's not an easy thing to be done. So simply said, uh, we have to fight it out at all levels. Yes, I think uh, underlying thing is that you have fight it out all along, uh, in long, uh, in the scale side as well as on the distributed, distributed, uh, distributed uh, generation side or rooftop side as well. The utility resistance, as I see, it is uh, will keep on increasing, both to utility as well as the uh, distributed. More, but more specifically on the distributed side. Now I will move to on my right hand side. I have got Rohit, who is from Adani Solar, and who will talk about uh, their mobile manufacturing facility as well as the type of financing uh, they will be making available along with the modules. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, EQ, for having me here. So yes. Uh, well, when I heard everyone speak over here, they weren't particular about the financing part. I mean, uh, so from Adani Solar, from the manufacturing arm of Adani, uh, as you see, any project has a 16% cost is model cost only, right? So, uh, being a player in the market, we have been trends in the market company for solar in the past so many years. Uh, we thought of doing something for the EPC players. I mean, how can they uh, bridge the gap between financing and having the things done? Because we have so many pressure already on them, be it the pressure from the discount, which they are not allowing them to get the power, and uh, then be it the other, you have to get the off taker who is a with good rate uh, holder, triple A, triple B. So then we at Adani, we thought, let's let's do something for it. I mean, then uh, what we are trying to do right now in market is we are having a uh, collaboration with Adani Capital, which is our group company only. So when we are telling everyone in the market that look, when you are approaching us, uh, so we'll do one thing, we'll have a module for you, if you need financing, we have a collaboration with Arani Capital. So you don't have to produce bank ability report, BNF report to your banks, right? Arani Capital will be funding the projects and we are kind of having the, uh, the guarantee from the Arani to Bondi, right? With Mundra Solar or Arani Capital. So it will be an easy task for an ABC to run even to have the funding. For the projects. The initial funding for the three, four years, years time, which they want initially to get their business on, on the rise. So that's what we are trying to do, which uh, our competitors, be it Vikram or Vari, they don't uh, have such kind of things yet uh, uh, capitalized in the market. So, yes, this is one thing we are trying to do in the market. If anyone of you are uh, want, want to have the financing thing done with your projects, come to us. We'll try to help you in that. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, like, uh, if you see the gap between utility and rooftop right now, you are seeing from the past five, six years, utility going quite, quite, uh, it's, it's, it's doing quite good. But rooftop, <coughs> because of various factors, has already uh, been told by Rahul, he told everything in detail, be it the uh, pressure from the ISCOMs, be it the social economic uh, uh, reforms done by the government to help farmers, which is also a part of society only, we cannot say no to them also. But then, yes, uh, giving money to uh, for subsidizing the things, you should you should you should try to uh, uh, you should try to give something discounts. So I was in discount for three and a half years. So I have seen what discounts go through. They are totally bullied right now. Uh, I mean, they need funding from the government uh, so that they can back up this solar mission for India, which is particular for the distributed solar. And uh, well, uh, when uh, it, you know, it all depends. I mean. Uh, we should not be negative about the things, about solar, because if we are, as players, go negative in the market, then who is going to push it, right? So we have to be optimistic for that. So yes, uh, uh, good things are will be there, and we are trying to just help you out in that. And uh, let's see, uh, uh, let's hope for the good things in the future. Uh, thank you, Lloyd. But I just want to have a very specific question. Uh, on the kind of uh, financing facility that you are making available. Uh, what are the kind of features of the, the 
choosing kind of fabric that will make available to the uh, It has other features. I mean, my primary uh, business would be selling the models in the market, right? Correct. So, uh, when you go to a bank or to NBFC, you have to show the bank ability report of the model manufacturer. Okay. Correct. Right. So, you have to go through n number of processes. It will take you 5 6 months of time. Sometimes they won't tell, they won't give you financing because you have seen what happened after ILFS got down, right? So that has really affected the market. So we at Adani say that look, you will get the loan, uh, the debt financing at a very uh, fast rate, maybe in a month or two. You're not, you're not, you don't have to wait for five or six months. You don't have to show the credibility of the model manufacturer because we are backed up only by the Adani. I mean, we are M supplying the modules. My agency is giving the funding, and you will be. So you are essentially providing supplies. You can, we can work on that. I mean, it's, it's open discussion which we will all have the ability with the APC player or the players in the market. It's oh. a way out. I mean, it's not a one concrete solution, but after discussing with the players what they actually want, uh, I was in talks with Robert also, so we were talking about the module, uh, so getting the funding for modules so that they can they can pay the money later for the module, so they can help with the uh, uh, the cash flow problem in the number. Okay. So we are trying to do all those uh, um, things that help APC player to do better business in the country.